Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. As we get further into the book of Numbers, in our reading today, uh, we can really begin to see some similarities between uh, what the children of Israel experience and what we experience spiritually. Of course, we've already seen much that parallels our own experience uh, in the children of Israel in the sense that they were redeemed by God. They were led out of Egypt just as we've been redeemed by Christ, and we've been called out of the world. Uh, and, of course, they've been able to enter into a covenant with God, just as we have entered into a covenant with God. But as we get into the book of Numbers, further into the book of Numbers, we see um, a lot of other parallels that come out as well. And in chapter 10, verses 1 through 10, we read about these silver uh, trumpets that were to be constructed, uh, which uh, can symbolize for us the gospel as these silver uh, trumpets were blown, uh, the people would assemble, also the people would set out. It's also the means by which they would worship. They'd be gathered in the feast uh, together to begin worship. And uh, they were also would go out into warfare against their enemies as directed by these trumpets. And the same thing is true with us with the gospel. We are, um, we are called together as a people uh, through the gospel, but also were sent out into the world uh, through uh, really um, through the gospel message. And then we're also called to worship the Lord based on what he's done for us through Christ, uh, which is connected to the gospel. And then we go out and engage in spiritual warfare, standing on the basic principles of the gospel in doing so. And so these trumpets that they rallied behind and, uh, and rallied around, symbolize for us the gospel because it's the gospel also that we rally around. But then it goes on too in that they begin their journey. Here in Numbers chapter 10 in verses 11 through 28, we see them actually set out. Uh, they've been there at Sinai for a good year, and now it's time for them to move on and to begin to head towards the promised land. And us as well, as we accept the gospel, we then set out on our own journey towards the promised land, towards all the wonderful eternal blessings that God has promised us. But it's a journey. It's a it's a journey that we go on through this life, uh, day in and day out, week in, week out. Uh, for the rest of our lives, we're on this journey, uh, seeking that heavenly um, inheritance that God has promised us. But then also they invited others, uh, particularly Moses, in chapter 10, verses 29 through 32, uh, we see him uh, inviting his father-in-law to come along. He said, you know, you come with us and you'll be blessed with us and you can join in on the journey. Uh, and we would do the same as well as we're going on our own journey uh, based upon the gospel, being called by the gospel to go out into the world and begin our journey towards our heavenly home. We want to invite other people as well uh, to join us in that and to be blessed with us as we enter into that eternal state. And so we can see a lot of parallels just in really chapter 10 that we can see that are very similar to what we uh, experience. And so as we continue on and as we continue on in chapter 11 and the next few chapters, especially, we're going to see a lot of rebellion by the people. We're going to see that while they're on their journey, they don't do very well. And a lot of what they uh, did wrong was based on a lack of faith and a lack, lack of trust in Moses, but ultimately trusting in the Lord. And so the Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that these things were written down so that we would be warned. Um, there in chapter 10, starting in verse 1, he says, For I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. We've read about both of those things. And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food. And all drank the same spiritual drink, for they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them, and the rock was Christ. In other words, all those things were symbolic of what would be fully experienced in Christ. In verse 5, he says, Nevertheless, with most of them, as most of them in that generation, God was not well pleased, for they were laid low in the wilderness. And we'll read about that soon in our daily readings. In verse 6, Now these things happened as examples for us so that we would not crave evil things as they also craved. Do not be 
idolaters as some of them were, as it was written, the people sat down to eat and drink and stood up to play, referring to the golden calf. Nor let us act immor immorally, as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in one day. Nor let us try the Lord, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the serpents. Nor grumble, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These, now these things happened to them as an example, and they were written for our instructions, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. So basically, the Apostle Paul is saying, all this has been recorded for us, for those to whom the end of the ages have come, for us as believers in Jesus Christ, so that we could be encouraged to continue our journey, not in idolatry, not in lust, not in um, selfishness, not in lack of faith, um, not murmuring and complaining, but just continuing on our journey, keeping our head up, keeping our eyes fixed on Christ, and neither turning to the right hand or to the left, but continuing up that upward pathway to heaven and to stay focused in that way. And so as we read in the book of Numbers, let's always be thinking about our own spiritual walk and be comparing our own lives to those of Israel. Uh, are there times when we uh, imitate them in the way that we respond to various situations in our lives? Is there a better way that we can be committed to the Lord? Is there a better way that we can be committed to those who are in leadership uh, among us um, as God has foreordained? Um, there's a lot of things that we can reflect on as we go through the story in the book of Numbers. But the main thing is that we be warned because we are all susceptible to falling under the same temptations as they did. Uh, only now we have Christ, we have God, we have the Holy Spirit uh, to help us through those struggles, through those trials. Uh, but it requires us to be submissive to that, to be sensitive to that, and to trust in that as we go along. So these are some things we can reflect on and think about as we do our reading today. With that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.